Yeah, and there is this kind of sense that we don't quite know what is going on, right? And how do we price this market uh, that we're seeing? Let's get over for some more analysis. Sandra Morris, Harris Chairman and CEO, George Ball, is with us. George, you are really saying, you know, in these unprecedented times, earnings for the companies that are actually still giving earnings and forward guidance is pretty unreliable. So what metrics do we go by in terms of looking at pricing and valuation and what you know that balance between risk and opportunity looks like? It's, it's a very unusual period in time. Um, as of 10 days ago, the Standard & Poor's earnings for the second half of the year were estimated at $72, so that would annualize to $144, which seems totally out of touch with reality. If you look at what Disney reported today, for example, uh, which was only the beginning of the, of the squeeze, companies have no idea how little, really, they are apt to earn. Um, <coughs> the, the markets have been trading largely on pandemic rumors and reports. Are, are the COVIDus, uh, COVID-virus cases going up? Are there vaccines? Are there cures? Aren't there? Um, and there's an interesting phenomenon in that. Um, nobody can really trade a rumor. You can trade uh, uh, momentum. You can trade mean reversion. But right now, the algorithmic traders, who normally account for half of the uh, volume in the marketplaces are largely being displaced because their algorithms don't fit what's going on now. So at this moment in time, if you look at the last two or three days, what we've got is really a, a, an irregular uh, a phase where the pandemic trading panic is, tra is changed to a, 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 a search for equilibrium. Um, and that's perplexing to, to most investors. And right now, in terms of the daily volatility, it's giving us something of a pause. So by your estimates, do you think the, the, the sort of levels that the S&P should be looking at after this is about 2,800? So how do you, I guess, get reach that level? And at that level, what companies do you see at the moment that you think are fundamentally good opportunities that are looking very cheap at the moment? Um, The most probable price for the market today, uh, tomorrow, is today's price. Uh, in other words, nobody knows really is it going to be higher or lower. So I think it's fair to take the hypothesis that the market today is perfectly priced. This is equilibrium. This is the way it's going to be because it's the digest of everything that people know at the moment, which isn't very much. Um, and that, I think, means that there is a moment for the stock picker to come back to the forefront because there are scores, even hundreds of companies that seem enormously cheap in a market with a Dow at 2,800. Um, I will offer one unpopular or, or at least uh, contrarian view, which is that the dominance of the, of the fangs is, is apt to come to an end uh, for three or four years now, the fangs have really been the drivers of, of, of the good part of the market. Uh, and I think that their, their, uh, their sway uh, is getting long in the tooth, and that, that's probably a better time to be exiting the, the fangy names, the alphabets, the Amazons, et cetera, but rather than entering them. How do you factor in uh, the reality that we might live in a post-pandemic world where the pandemic itself is really playing into the strengths of these digital tech giants like we saw in earnings last week? Um, they're giants. They're great companies. They're growing. They've got cash. They're strong. And, and what's happened in <laughs> every era is, is that the biggest companies get pulled down. Uh, they get bright people who leave them. They become bureaucratic. They become challenged uh, uh, by governmental apparatus. And their sway, their superiority, their dominance gets, gets uh, reduced 
really by, by their own success. Good people leave. They become stultified because they get to be too big, and they become regulatorily or governmentally or uh, civilly challenged. And I think not today, not tomorrow, but that's going to start to happen to, to the uh, uh, the FANG and FANG-associated uh, stocks uh, at some point here. So, George, give us some of your stock picks and whether or not you have some sectors where a lot of those companies that you like are in. Uh, I think stocks that could be 50 to 100 percent higher would include uh, a land animal care with, because veterinarian pet, pet care uh, is, is going to be a growing sector. Uh, a company like Immunotherapy, which which has a therapy which um, alleviates uh, uh, peanut uh, 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 death. Uh, the BDCs, because they're lenders to small companies, and those small companies aren't going to go out of business. Uh, Capital Southwest, Main Street Capital would be a, a case like that. And now Enterprise Products. Uh, it's an MLP. It's the giant of the MLPs, and it does look like oil is going to uh, have found a bottom. Uh, oil producers will go out of business at $25 a barrel, but, but there's still going to be produce uh, going through the pipelines of companies like Enterprise. High dividend uh, and vitally necessary. Uh, those are sectors and companies that could sell quite a bit higher without the market going up. George, with the dislocation in uh, privately held companies, what do you see for private equity in that space? Uh, more opportunities or sort of conversely, you're going to see valuations coming down? Well, again, I don't want to be Deb Debbie Downer at all, mm. but uh, there are lo uh, lots <laughs> of, of private companies that have been bought and sold at five, six, seven, eight times their revenues. They've been losing money and they have been unicorns there very, very highly valued. I think there's a total disconnect today between the prices that existed two months ago and the prices that buyers would pay today. Uh, I think that the private equity companies, and some of them have publicly traded affiliates uh, that, that have unicorn multiples of revenues, unprofitable companies on their books, are quite probably going to be faced with very major uh, uh, markdowns. It's like the real estate market. When you get into a recession, the owners of houses remember the prices from two months ago. The potential buyers remember what or, or look forward to what exists today. And that's, that's very true in the, in the valuations of, of private companies. And it's going to hurt the private equity firms' asset values, uh, I think, in the immediate future. George Ball, thank you very much for joining us today. Sandra Morris, Harris Chairman and CEO.